and as you know, last week. And the good report is, we saw his parents yesterday, they're doing amazing. So thank you for your prayers. So this is a couple that went through um, COVID uh, and uh, together in the last few weeks, and they're doing amazing, 94 and 95 years old. And um, so that's a real answer to prayer. So thank you for that. So before I um, go and I'm released, I just wanted to honor the people who came from Christina's house today. Uh, one of my absolute heartfelt favorite outreaches. Thank you, thank you for being here. We want to bless you today. And I know you'll be blessed with the word. Um, and so I will be uh, back at the end of service to give a couple of announcements and uh, we'll be released for our lunch. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Isolation backfired on the devil. <laughs> yes, Angel V, that means you. That's code work when I say I need... Hey, Angel just came to me and he said, if you call V up, I'm going to come up to him and play the guitar. How can I deny a double portion when I wasn't even planning on it? Oh, that's the word right there. Oh, my God, that's it right there. Just dropped. Heaven just dropped right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's it right there. Can you give me uh, the scripture? Somebody on uh, Psalm uh, that I just read. There's one word that I, that I have to emphasize. Hit me like a bolt of lightning this morning. And it just hit me again. Matter of fact, uh, can you turn off the lights and just put this on the projector? I got to change the atmosphere here for right now. Whew. I got to get my glasses. Just walk closer. You didn't put my translation up, did you? The word bound. Can you put up my translation that I gave you? I messed up by not giving you that one. I don't see the word bound. The prisoners, you had the prisoners lead to prosperity, and that's awesome. The word that, that hit me in, in the translation, this is why it's really, really important to, uh, and to recognize how privileged we are in today's technology, in today's um, generosity of the Spirit of God, where He's graced different people to write the Bible in they'll just use a different adjective or a different adverb or they're saying the same thing the context is the same but it says a little differently and boy you can read it one day in one translation and you know if I can say it's just normal but you read it in another translation and the Holy Spirit just bam hits it and really uh, makes a point God sets the lonely in families did you hear what I just said God felt, sets the lonely in families. He's a father. The best father. Yes, he, he's a judge too. And, and, and we need to pay attention. You just, you just don't live life the way you want to live and expect, oh, nothing's going to happen to me because God's the father. No, the, he, he has guidelines and those guidelines are to produce life for you. Does everybody understand that? He's not mean, but he's righteous. He's not bad, he's good. Just like the government puts lines on the roads so you don't crash, okay? The Bible is a recipe book filled with recipes on how to create the best in every situation through faith in him. Here it is, he brings out those who are bound into prosperity, bound. Stavros, just got up and admitted he was bound. He was giving his life to something other than the heart of God who created him and has a good plan for him. And thank God he came to his senses that, that he just talked about. Because he's on his way out of bondage into prosperity. 
When you see that word prosperity, get way, I mean, just blow that word away. It has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with everything. And it has everything to do with freedom. It has everything to do with overcoming no matter what trials and tribulations you go through. Money is like, that's nothing for God. The gold and the silver is His. He says if you give your heart to Him and you follow Him, He'll take care of all your needs. That's what Matthew 6.33 says. Yet most of us, were, we grow up in this world and we think that survival and making money and having a car, having a house is the priority, and it's not. It's knowing Him and letting Him in so He can fill you, so He can flow out of you, so other people can taste and see His goodness. And whatever assignment you have, there's some Christians that are, have an assignment, they're supposed to be millionaires. There's some Christians that are assignments that are not supposed to be millionaires. We don't have to chase the money. The money will chase you if you chase Him. What I mean by that, make sure I'm clear, is that whatever you need for the assignment that God has for you, He will get it to you. He just wants us to make Him first place. Because when you make Him first place, you're opening the door for Him to do what He wants to do in your life, and He always has something good in mind. And the devil consistently tries to get us out of that belief. Now, when, when I read that, and, and you read, he brings out those who are bound. Is there anybody here? that feels bound, that wants to come out of bondage? Because when I just said what I said a couple days ago, that there was a double portion because Angel came to me and he, said, and he said he'll play the guitar, Angel has never said that to me. And you know how long I've been, most of you know how long I've been working with Angel, not as long with V, but whenever I call for music, V comes up in a dash and Angel comes to me and says, I'll come up and play the, my guitar. If V comes up, he has... Listen, hear my heart, everyone. Please pay attention because this whole ministry is about coming here and what is the Holy Spirit going to say to me? What good thing does God want to do in my life today? That Because that's what we're all about here. What is the heart of heaven, the God of heaven, the one that loves us more than anybody else? What is What good thing is he going to do in here today? I can't wait to get in there today that's what he wants to build inside of us a lot of us that hasn't been built inside of us because like my brother-in-law his experience wasn't like that they went through a ritual and they acted more like the devil than Jesus he grew up he wasn't interested in like I said he's still hurting because he didn't taste the heart of God There is something special, and, and I am just seriously stepping out on the water and saying, from the point that God gave me that scripture this morning, there is a double portion here today to take you out of bondage into freedom, out of bondage into joy, out of fear into peace, because fear is bondage, everyone. Fear is bondage. So if you struggle with fear, it's bondage. <laughs> oh boy, some of you are going to trip out when I say what I'm about to say. I had a dream last night. About six guys backed up a pickup truck and took out this wooden object. And it, and it uh, in the dream, it was like, it looked like a, like a stall, like almost a, something like they were going to put a horse or, or a, a cow in it to restrict it. I said, what is that? And, and as the dream went on, they, they surrounded me and they put a gun to my head. They went like this. They put a gun to my head. 
And, uh, and then they started talking in a weird, weird language. So in the dream, I start to talk in my heavenly language. In my dream, some, if some of you aren't familiar, familiar with this, then you can ask me afterwards. But I, in my dream, I just started, I said, okay, if you're going to talk in a language I don't understand, and I don't know what's going on, and it feels like demonic, like this isn't good, like an object that's real ugly and something to do with bondage, and then a gun to my head, and then you're surrounding me, like this doesn't feel good, and then, and then, uh, then, and then someone put their hands on me, so it was like, okay, this is getting worse. So I started to say, Jimo Range Balayara Bushe Levande Bale. And one of them spoke in English and said, You're a pain in the ASS. Christy, my daughter's looking at me like, I can't believe you just said that, Dad. I didn't say it, I spelled it. I'm not swearing. Listen, listen. Here's my point. This is... The greatest privilege you could ever have... Dan, come quickly. The greatest privilege you could ever have is to link up with the heart of God through your faith in Jesus, paying attention to the Holy Spirit that comes and lives inside of you after you give your heart to Jesus. Boom! He's the leader, and you live from here up and out not here that's the life of a christian is supposed to be a life of power and peace and love and wisdom from the source because you're connected and in january we talked about oneness and then the next month we talked about embrace and then we talked about privilege and and this month we're talking about collaborating with the holy spirit the word collaboration is join together. No, join together to build something. God wants you to partner with Him to build something that makes a difference in people's lives. Don't let go. I ain't letting go of you. <laughs> this is the place. God wants to constantly upgrade us, and it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. I've got a one-room schoolhouse in here. I have Christians that have been with Jesus for 75 years. Uh, and, and, and people that maybe just be hearing the reality of Jesus today. So I'm in a, I know I'm in a one-room schoolhouse. But it doesn't matter where you are in your walk, whether you've never started the walk or whether you're long-term like Pastor Dan. It doesn't matter. What matters is you need to know there's someone that is hungering and wanting you to come and draw near to him and walk with him on a daily basis so that through me, the Father can reach out his hands. The, the, no, give me your hands. The, the disciples prayed. It's okay. The disciples prayed. God, reach out your hands through us to heal. God wants you to be a, a difference maker. There's no greater joy than to be used by His Spirit to touch someone else that's around you. There's nothing in this world that can compare to what I say. There's a double portion grace here today to touch every single heart in this place today. You cannot build the life that God has preordained you to build on this earth without Him. I can't do it. Jesus said, you can do nothing without oneness. Come on, Katya. We'll, we'll get a lady up here, because this isn't a man thing. 
without oneness. She can do nothing. What Jesus said is, you, what he meant is, you cannot do what I have called you to do. You cannot be what I've called you to be and hear well done when you get to heaven without me. Jesus said, Katya is the branch and he is the vine. The vine has the power. The vine has the juice. The vine has the life-giving spirit. So when she links up and practices every morning saying, I need the vine. When she's driving down the road, pretend you're driving. And in her heart, in her heart, she's saying, I, I need the vine. I need the juice of the vine. Then the more of the juice of the vine she gets. And at the end of the day, she's not crawling to bed because she practiced oneness with the vine. She's She doesn't get home and say, you know, has someone cut me off on the highway today and they gave me the finger? She says, someone gave me the finger today and they said, you're number one. So she's feeling pretty good. That's the difference between having the juice of the vine and being disconnected from the vine because the vine is the life-giving spirit we were created but we came into this earth without the vine jesus died the father sent jesus so we could connect back to the vine by the power of the holy spirit we were birthed without batteries batteries were not included but they're available Pastor Dan testified, just got to get some batteries. The batteries are here today. Father, what do you want to do? Stavros, come up here. Where's my microphone? Stavros, someone suggested, came to me after you came up here, and they suggested, they, they thought you were supposed to pray. So I thought I was supposed to say a little bit more before you prayed. So whatever's in your heart, could you pray for everybody here and everybody that's watching by this camera right now? Because I can feel the intensity of God's heart and His hand reaching out to help people. To, to take the blinders off their eyes, to take the religiosity off their mind, to, to root and ground them in the reality of who our God is. So whatever you feel, you're supposed to pray by the Spirit of God. Pray. Hold on just a second. We got the power, okay. All right. God, for, uh, for anyone that's going through uh, any any times that they don't think they can get out of right now any times that they think they're constricted to in life that they have no hope for um, I was told that hope stands for hang on and pain ends and that's exactly what uh, happens every single morning I pray God that everyone in here sees the light today that I see through uh, through the good graces of you God because nothing is nothing is possible in life without you even the bad days are the, are the best days in reality. I, uh, I thank you, God, every single day for everyone that stands with me through all my tough times. And I pray, God, that you send angels down to stand with everyone else going through tough times in their life. And I, I pray, God, that no matter what anyone's going through, that they see the, the good that's about to happen in their life. Amen. If you want to, were you coming up to say something? Uh, I feel that to say this, yes. A man owned a house, and and Jesus came to visit him. 
And he was so honored, he said, Jesus, you came to my house. I'm going to give you the best room. And he gave him the room and he stayed the night. And during the night, there was a knock on his door. And he, he opened the door. And it was the devil. And he tried to close the door, but the devil put his foot in there and he pushed. And he got in the house. And he tormented the man with thoughts, and lustful thoughts, and beat the man. And it happened all night. He was, he was tormented. And the morning came, right when the morning was came, the devil left the house. And Jesus came down stairs in the morning, and the man said, Jesus, what happened? Where were you? And he said, you gave me, you gave me one room of your house, and I'm a gentleman. And he said, I'm so sorry, Jesus. I give you half of my house. And Jesus is a gentleman, and he took the night the next day came and you already know what happened right the devil came again and knocked on that door and got in the house and the same thing happened it was so intense and before the day the day broke he ran away the devil ran away again and Jesus came down the stairs and he said Jesus where were you where were you I needed so much help I was tormented and he said, you gave me half of your house. And I gladly took it. I'm a gentleman. And he, he apologized again. He felt so sad. He said, I'm so sorry. I, I give you, there's 10 rooms in my house. I give you nine rooms in my house. But I'm going to keep this room for myself because this room, I got personal things in this room. That night, the devil came again, got in the house. He couldn't stop the devil from coming. He tormented him, and he was like, just drained. He was like, so tormented. The devil left in the, in the morning. Jesus came down, and he said, Jesus, why couldn't you help me? He said, because you gave me nine rooms in my, your house, and I'm a gentleman, and I took those nine rooms. He said, I give you all my house. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I give you everything. I gave the keys to Jesus. He said, you can have my house. You can have the whole thing. I don't want. It's yours. The night came. And the bang on the door came. Pastor's always using me, so I'll use him. <laughs> but you're the man. And the door banging on the door and when he was going to get the door Jesus stopped the man and went in front and he opened the door and the light broke through and the devil looked he looked he said he looked at the address and he said he looked at the door and he looked at Jesus he looked at the address again and something wrong you know and the devil ran he just ran and because Jesus owned the house and that's what happened to Starvos I've known Star Wars for years. He's got a huge heart. Huge. Words can't even describe how huge I just feel the, the special, the presence that the Lord has to call on his life. And he gave the 10 rooms the house. And Jesus gladly will take the house. And it's graduation season. And the way to graduate is to surrender. And that's what I feel God's speaking to us today. Whatever the Lord gives you.
every Sunday. The plan of the Father and Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit is to help every heart that comes in this building. Every heart that's being ministered to through the cameras. That is God's heart. He desires to equip us with the revelation so that we can have victory everywhere we go after we leave this place. It's a training center. It's a hospital. Matter of fact, probably the best way to say it is it's a, it's a healing hospital. Uh, but it's also a, a hospital. It's like a rehabilitation hospital. It, it's like you get the therapy that you need. So you get the healing you get, need, the therapy you need, and you get the training that you need. I'm familiar with those terms because my father just had a stroke at 94, 95. And, and so I've been in each one of those realms with him. The Holy Spirit just used Pastor Dan to give a, fa a, a fabulous analogy, uh, what Jesus would in his day have been called a parable. What, what, what was going on in your heart? And I, I'm not asking anybody, I, I'm not asking, uh, I, I, I'm just loving you the way God wants me to love you today. Because love is about saying things that people need to hear with a spirit of love. In other words, you're not doing it uh, for yourself. You're doing it to, to help, whether people receive it or not or believe it or not. So as a helper of the Father this morning, and that's what I am, I'm helping the Father. Just like Jesus said, Jesus at 12 years old said to his parents when they were in a pan panic, they couldn't find him, and they finally found him after three days. Interesting, Pastor Dan, three days. Three days, never thought of that until right now. Three days, resurrection, three days. They found him after three days. The parents found him after three days as a 12-year-old. And Jesus says, what's the problem, Mom and Dad? I was about my father's business. If, if you don't know why you're here on earth, you're here because you were created by God for a purpose, and that's to imitate him, represent him, be filled with him as you surrender to him so he can fill you up like a cup, and then wherever you go, whatever your assignment is, he can pour you out. Whatever it is, whatever your job assignment is, that's not your real purpose on this earth. That just gets you uh, to, to rub shoulders with certain people that God wants to touch through you when you are in your assignment. That's why character on your assignment is so critical as a Christian. Because if someday you're supposed to pour something out, that it's supposed to minister to someone's heart, and you've acted like the devil in your assignment, they're not interested. So character, Christ-likeness is the highest priority of this ministry. That's number one. What, what's God saying to you? How many rooms? How low have you gone? How surrendered are you? Because I can tell you the heart of God, the heart of Father, the only reason that this would happen, which was not in my notes today, and, and I did not have a plan going in this direction today, The living God of heaven and earth wants to work through each and every one of you to make a difference on this earth and fulfill your destiny on this earth and learn what that means and grow in that. But he's limited based on our hunger, on our thirst, on our surrender. Have we given him 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%? Have we given him one room? Where are we? Because if the God of heaven that knows you more intimately than anyone else does in this room, knows all your thoughts, knows all your history, knows that everything, he had a good plan that he has for in your future.
He is turning the story around and knocking on every heart right now. To just take a moment. Because when you just keep going through life without paying attention to what your Creator is saying to you, then there's a good chance you're on the wrong road going the wrong way thinking you're okay. The kindness and the mercy of God, as Stavros just spoke, is He doesn't give up. But the key is, when will we give in? How much will we give Him? What does our life really look like when we're outside of these four walls? What message are we bringing to other people? How are we influencing other people? Are we influencing them? as an imitation of the Father. Is my, is my walk with Jesus part-time or full-time? Where am I? The Holy Spirit is doing a one-on-one -on -one right now between you and you right now. You choose. No one else decides this. And we can blame no one else. Whether my brother-in-law would say it's the hurt of my past, I'm not interested in Jesus. He can hold on to that. Or he can forgive, get cleaned out of his bitterness, his unforgiveness, get rid of jealousy and envy. Just, just get cleaned out and get filled up with life and love. We get to choose what we're carrying inside. If there's anyone in this place today that you can identify bitterness, unforgiveness, jealousy in your heart, ask God to help you forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven by Him. That's a heavy-duty statement. Is there anybody that you don't want to see today? Is there anybody that you don't want to see when you go into Home Depot or you go into Costco or go into any store in the area? Is there anybody you don't want to see their cell, uh, cell number or picture show up? Is there anybody that, that you have ought against, angst against? It's time to get rid of it. It's time to let Jesus in that room. Father, whatever it is that you're doing by the power of your spirit, I pray that they receive the fullness. I pray that whatever you're saying to each and every heart, and each and every heart knows, you make it clear. Their heart is thumping and it's pumping. What is it? Father, make it clear to them so they don't miss out. Help them take the step that you're asking them to take. If it's saying yes to Jesus because they recognize they need Jesus, that they've sinned like everybody else and they need a Savior, help them take that step today. If it, they're a Christian, they've said yes to Jesus, they're born again, they're saved, but they're hanging on to junk, help them get rid of it today. Whatever the clean out and fill up it is that you want to do, for each and every heart today. I pray that they receive it. I pray that whatever humility you're asking them, that when they do it, they receive the fresh grace. And pain is replaced with peace. And they would come into a oneness with you and grow in that oneness and recognize that everything that I've said today and anybody else has sung or said today is absolutely 100% truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lisa.
Amen. Amen. Getting my instructions. Hallelujah. Amen. I love coming to the presence of God. Father, I thank you for today. Father, there's been so many good words that were spoken that you could take into any avenue of our lives. Father, I thank you for your word that the word I got today, which Pastor alluded to, was God wants us to partner with him. He wants a family. He made you. He wants a family. He wants somebody who will love him for who he is, and he wants to love back. He wants you to come in agreement with him. We're worshiping God in our giving today, and I love, I'm going to keep going back to this because I love it. 2 Corinthians 9. God loves a cheerful, glorious, hilarious giver. Amen. Because he wants to partner with you, because when you partner with God, you will never have lack. You will never have lack. He created the universe. He spoke things into existence. Does he need your finances? No. Does he want to partner with you? Yes. Amen. It's the same principle, the nine rooms, the three rooms, the two rooms. It's been throughout. I really didn't even have to come out here because it was all really preached in the message. Is your pocket a room that you haven't given the Lord? Your money, my money. It's really not your money because he gave you birth. He gave you life and he gave you the gifts that you make a living out of. Amen? He blessed you. He blessed you. It's a good sobering message, and there's nothing wrong with a sobering message. Actually, I prefer sobering messages because when I leave here, it gives me something to dig deep and have the Holy Spirit talk to me throughout the week. Lord, what, why do I feel that way? Why does it every time when somebody asks me for money, I get this thing inside me? What is it? Holy Ghost, what is it? Get rid of it. I don't want it. Amen? Because you don't want anything to hinder. You want God to fill that light to fill you. So maybe this is it. Maybe this is the one room you haven't given to God. Now's the time to give it to God. Today, because there's grace in the house to give it to God. What is grace? Grace is strength. It's stability. It's a willingness to lay it down. So the Holy Spirit is here to say, if you haven't, giving me that part of your heart today. I want it. I want it because I want to free you and I want to partner with you. He said, prove me. God says, prove me, prove me, prove me. Amen. So Father, I thank you that there's a sobering message and it's a, the spirit of God is in the house and the anointing is in the house to lay down those things, Lord, that we have not given you. And so Father, we just jump into the river because you're providing a place where we can easily just let this thing go. Father, I give you my finances. I give you all of my house. I give you all nine rooms, all 12 rooms, whatever it is. I give you the whole enchilada, the whole pie. Amen. Amen. Father, I don't want anything that is not of you inside of me so that your light can shine and the power of God can flow out of me and the love of God. Father, I want to say and hear only as what I say my father say and do amen so Lord we give you this time we give and we sow our seed we sow our seed into the ground that you God we just give it to you we sow it into the ground but who's the one who makes it sprout who's the one that makes it come out who's the one that makes ears on a on a thing of corn on a stalk of corn who's the one that multiplies it you are, Father God, 30, 60, and 100 fold, your word says. So, Lord, we lift up, we take this time to worship you in our giving, to be consistent in our giving. Amen and amen. Also, we're still doing, we're going to continue to do the Good Samaritan Fund. Uh, so, if you want to give to that, you can do that as well. I know it's on the app, too. But God wants you to partner with him. 
Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Well, the Good Samaritan Fund, okay, just to go real quick, is we have somebody actually in the congregation who's coming home that has been uh, in the hospital since January. Okay? They're coming home, and they need some railings put up. And this is an example of how the Good Samaritan Fund would work. We're, we, wanna, we want to help this person in the congregation to be able to do that. Some may have the finances, some may not. But that's a good example how we, where that money, and if you give to the Samaritan Fund, is going to go to. It's things like that. Not to take out of the regular budget that pays for the house and the lights and everything like that. Because I'm going to tell you, you want this place open. You want it open so that you can hear the Spirit of God. You can come in here every, every week and hear the message of God. Collaborate with God. Partner with God. Give Him all your room. You're not going to get that on the news. You're just going to get gloom on the news. You get hope here. Amen. So first and foremost, give to the house. And then I'm going to ask you to give more to the Good Samaritan Fund. Amen. Just a couple quick announcements. Had an awesome time with the teens. They all know their passion now. It's great. Learning who God is making them to be. A couple things going on this week. Well, first of all, today, those of you ladies staying for the luncheon, it smells amazing down there. We're going down to the end of the hallway. It will be on your left-hand side, and uh, we can't wait to see you down there. Secondly, this week, we have a work day on Saturday. So I'm glad you said that, um, and we're talking about collaborating. You know, the house of God, this is, this is where God, um, I call it his living room. This is where he wants us to come and honor him, worship him, but hear him and have that relationship with him. And so when we come together, this is about God, right? This is God's house. This is his presence, his family. And he said to me last week, this is the house that you all share with him. This is the house we all share Can with God. Something? Absolutely. Because the Lord is really, I need some microphone, whoever's, hello. Go ahead. My mic, thank you. Uh, this is actually not a house of God. Oh, you can hear that one's really just, I just want to add to it. Yes. It's more like the conventions. No, that's true. You're the house of God. Amen. The first house. You're the house of God. make a what a community a subdivision this is a subdivision amen lots of houses here anyway this subdivision we have things that need to be put in order and that's right details that we want to take care of so that happens saturday and also we have a baby bottle drive going on for the pregnancy care center if you want to collect change bring one to work we um, love this opportunity to reach out because it's not a huge endeavor where it's very weighty on one person, but a lot of people can get involved. And um, we are able to bless them. And this year we want to expand and bless ABC Pregnancy Center in Connecticut as well if we're able to do that. So let's see what God does. Amen. Amen. I'm done. You ready? Amen. Bill? Bill. <laughs> Uncle Billy's helping out. It's a family, family affair here. She just wanted to take the baby from me, so. I'm her favorite, though, let's be honest. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus. 
Jesus' parents, Uncle Billy. All right, now that we have the order. <laughs> Father, we just thank you right now, God. I thank you for every word that has been spoken, God. I thank you for the gift of surrender. I thank you for the places that you want to take us in our lives, God. I thank you for the things that you want to do. For every brother and every sister I have in this house, God, I thank you for the plan that you have over their life, God. So I just thank you that we come into collaboration with you because under your leadership, Father, there is nothing in this world that we cannot do together. So we come together as this house, God, and we say there is no one like you. There is none beside you. You are the beginning and the end. So we humble ourselves and we just say, you are our only way. We love you so much. We say, come, move upon our lives with power and peace. So I just release that over every heart in this place right now, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We hope you guys have a powerful week. The prayer team will be right here for you guys. And everyone going to the women's luncheon, be blessed. We love you guys so much. We'll see you next week.